<coughs> well, my name is Dr. John Stewart, and I want to talk to you about commercial and industrial ionization. We'll start with the, um, uh, the ionizing chamber, which is this device here, into which we have, we insert electrodes of 12 inches each, uh, 12 inches long or 6 inches long, and it fits into a quick connect assembly that allows you to remove these in a couple of seconds without having to screw and unscrew the electrodes and possibly damaging the thread here. So you might want to check the electrodes every every week or every few days and clean them with the steel wool in, inside if you can and outside because a little bit of deposit tends to accumulate. So that's the quick connect and that's a very tight positive connection that eliminates the need to unscrew anything. So that that end the water comes in from this side and, and goes down in, onto the end of the electrodes because that's where most of the wear is going to wear down like a candle. So the water comes in here goes, and goes out here through either barb connections or through uh, plumbing through uh, two inch pipes like this or through uh, adapters that will take it down to one and a half inch or, or one inch. <coughs> uh, this, at this end we have an ultraviolet light which shines down <coughs> along the length of the pipe so that the, the water flow is being exposed to the ultraviolet light. Here's <coughs> another ionizing chamber already wired up <coughs> exactly the same as that one and it's connected up to the ionizer box which we'll, we'll turn on <coughs> and then you'll see that there's an ultraviolet light there <coughs> if I unscrew this <coughs> you'll see the light of the ultraviolet and blue blue to give it a visible component so you can actually see it because ultraviolet is not easy to see so that's that chamber. Now if I turn up the, the turn up the power and then put a dummy load on here because the load is powering the electrodes in the water. So here is a, a 12 volt light automobile light bulb, a two amp light bulb. So we can turn that intensity down or up. If I turn it up too high, it'll burn out the light bulb. So about half power is about one amp. Uh, I don't want to be too high. But you can get up to two amps with this uh, CS2000 unit. So that's a good way sometimes of checking that there is an output. And you don't want this to, have to be too high. Otherwise, it can burn out the electrodes prematurely. And if the current is too high, the nanometer particle size or the ion size becomes too big and relatively ineffective. There's a balance between quality and quantity. Back to the electrodes. These are pure silver, solid silver electrodes. Uh, these are pure solid copper. In swimming pools, for example, we use copper with a little bit of silver. So this is how we get it from the manufacturer the solid copper uh, unclean so we have to clean these and then we mount them either 6 inch or 12 inch on, on these 2 inch diameter threads and we make our electrical connection here and this this one is a one copper and one silver electrode so we uh, for a dual metal control box so we can control the ratio of silver to copper. This was for a dolphin project where you, they wanted to have a very precise ratio over the copper and the silver. The other thing to mention about the chamber is the, uh, the magnet that is in here. There's a magnet inside. Uh, this is a powerful ferrite magnet. 
so that helps restructure the water and adds to the quality of the water. So you can either have a, a two inch diameter piping for your industrial system through, to, through your plumbing uh, into a holding tank or you can use the, the smaller smaller diameter connectors, barb they're called, barb connectors and these are five-eighths so we connect I'll show you how we connect the uh, the three components, the holding tank which would be, this is only a five gallon holding tank, most users want more than five gallons Th these are the high quality bulkhead connectors that go onto the tank like that so out of the tank into the into the little pump into the center of the pump and the output of the pump is the outside and through into the charging chamber which would be uh, here so that would fit so the from the tank to the pump to the charging chamber and back from the charging chamber into the tank again so there are only three components the tank the charging chamber and the pump and that this little pump is uh, run by a 12 volt power supply here's another one here it has its has its own 12 volt power supply to, to power this little it's quite a powerful little pump uh, this ionizer is run off a 24 volt supply uh, that to give it a higher voltage to be more effective if the water is pure. If you're using distilled or reverse osmosis water, then we want a higher voltage to push more current through to be effective. So the ionizing box, control box, can turn up or down. And as you turn it up, you'll, you see the intensity of light will be an indicator of how much current is going through the electrodes into the water and if there's no water that green light comes off meaning there's no current flowing it's important to make sure that the water is always flowing otherwise if there's current going through a stagnating static body of water it will tend to heat or boil the water in that cavity and that could damage the ionizer so that be, be aware of that uh, be aware of overdriving the electrodes and there's a notice on the ionizer to that effect if you overdrive the electrodes one the quality of your water the colloidal water will be impaired and you'll uh, prematurely burn out the electrodes and then you'll get undue staining <coughs> staining is inevitable with silver and copper and most metals they eventually uh, sooner or later start to plate out on the inside so that this nice transparent uh, tea tube will become covered inside with uh, with silver or copper atoms but to begin with uh, this looks quite attractive and um, we have the option of the white or the clear right, in the plumbing now with regard to this bulkhead adapter there are other smaller ones that I would not recommend because we don't want any leaks so this is a very high quality professional bulkhead connector that I provide with the system when you're doing your PVC connection always use uh, you can get clear PVC cement always use a primer or wipe it with it's a it's a liquid like a solvent and that cleans the surface otherwise you will not get proper adhesion between the two surfaces and this is the, the cement both of them are clear often they come in a co color like purple I prefer clear because it looks more aesthetically pleasing th th this again is you know, one of these connectors close, close up See? and you get a very positive disconnect and connect And when you are uh, uh, screwing in the thread here, usually there has to be, some people use Teflon tape. 
it's, it's far better to use the Teflon cement. This, this is Teflon cement that allows you to, un uh, un uh, to disconnect. So you would put this over all of the threaded surfaces, both sides, and then that will give you a much more a reliable, effective seal. As often, this is where the leaks occur, uh, when you don't have enough sealant uh, and this also acts as a, a lubricant that allows you for very clean um, connection, threaded connection. Another chamber uh, uh, for industrial uses sometimes we go instead of one chamber we might have two so we put the electrodes uh, two sets, two pair of electrodes, or a pair of copper and a pair of silver electrodes. So you could double the volume, or even more. This would be a manifold, and you could have multiple um, chambers, charging chambers, with multiple pairs of electrodes. When when you want to test the water, these are two meters, which I recommend. This is this one gives you not only the conductivity, which is a useful indicator of parts per million, but it also will measure ORP and pH. This is a simple conductivity only, and this, this is usually all that you will need, a conductivity meter, which I sell. Also, when you're putting uh, the tubing together, it's wise to use these uh, clamp, metal clamps and tighten them up so that there's no possibility of leak. In, in this connection here, I'm recommending uh, 3 8 inch diameter plastic tubing to connect the, the pump, which is a 3 8 barb, up to... Uh, he, this is uh, a bigger barb, so I have an adapter going from 3 8 to, to, uh, to 1 half. Uh, these little uh, barb adapters are difficult to find, but they're very, very useful. And, and in this case, it's a, a bigger bar, uh, barb uh, adapter. Uh, I, can, I buy these uh, specifically for this purpose, so you've got, it will connect a 3 eighths to a half inch or 3 eighths to 5 eighths, that kind of thing. And finally, uh, if it's copper, you, you can use a test strip to measure the copper ion content. This one will also measure pH. There are two other manufacturers that, who make similar products for copper. Unfortunately, there's no test at this point for silver, no reliable laboratory or test strip available for silver, mainly because silver has not uh, been popular, no one knows about silver, but copper has been around for quite a while, because copper uh, kills algae and multicellular organisms, silver kills bacteria and viruses, and uh, we, need, uh, uh, we need both really, but particularly for drinking, silver is ideal. I think that's all for today, thank you for watching.